So last time we talked, Autumn Kealoha, the heir of my legacy challenge, went with her wife, Shanna Kealoha, to her second trimester ultrasound appointment to get a glimpse of their unborn child for the very first time, while her sister, Renismay Volkov, visited her soulmate, Zayden Kibo, at his Evergreen Harbor apartment. The two of them having a heart-to-heart, -heart, and met his brothers, Dexter and Voldemar Kibo. And just because she's in her second trimester, doesn't mean Shanna would be forgetting about spellcasting. After leaving the hospital, Shanna headed to the realm of magic. She felt like she hadn't been there in forever, and she had a lot of work to do. She started off with greeting the one sage she'd introduced herself to, Riko Miyamoto, catching up with her before asking her to teach her a new spell and a new potion recipe. It didn't take a lot of convincing. With her handy, appealing, and charismatic traits, it was super easy for her to make new friends. Shanna's goal today was to become good friends friends with the other sages of magic as well, starting off with the sage of untamed magic, Kelly Bolden. The three talked amongst each other before Shanna invited the sage of mischief magic named Felix to join the conversation. How could someone not want to talk to a pregnant, adorable, newbie spellcaster? But it looks like Kelly felt like doing a bit more than talking. Hitting on a pregnant woman is so insanely ratchet, I can't even. After getting to know her new friends and mentors, Kelly and Felix, she asked them, as well as Rico, to teach her a spell or a potion. She learned the potion of emotional stability from Rico and the spell Desperio from Felix. But when she asked for a spell or potion from Kelly, she said no. How are you going to hit on her and not help her? I don't think I'm going to like you, Kelly. Since she knew Rico the best, she went ahead and asked her for some magical training. They practiced for a couple sims hours, and Shanna felt like she had learned a lot. Now, Edward, riddle me this. Why would anyone, and I mean anyone, want to hang out with you? Later on, Rico taught Shanna a spell, Screwbaroo. She learned two spells and one potion in one day, feeling very accomplished when it was time to go back home. And she also felt a very full bladder. But luckily for her, she had some potions of plentiful needs on hand, feeling better the instant she sucked it down. If it weren't for her being a spellcaster, she was sure her pregnancy pregnancy would have been downright miserable. Before heading back to Moonwood Mill, she had two more things she needed to do. She first said goodbye to Kelly, hoping that their friendship bar would be high enough next time to get a potion or a spell out of her. Before heading over to Caster's Alley to pick up some spellcasting goodies, she bought some wands, tomes, familiars, brooms, crystals, and potion ingredients, keeping her unborn baby in mind. They have a chance of becoming a spellcaster like her, and she wanted to be sure that she had all they needed when it was time to teach them about magic. The moment when Shanna got back home was the moment Alexis and Chris were off to San Sequoia. They would be paying their son and daughter-in-law, Edward and Hilary Volkov, a surprise visit, and would also be meeting their grandchildren, Nina and Micah Volkov, for the first time as well. They couldn't wait any longer. They had thought about their grandchildren for so long. This is one thing Alexis loved about growing old. She was so grateful to be able to witness her children have children of their own and see the wonderful parents they would become. And right when Alexis and Chris arrived was when they realized why they shouldn't pull surprise visits. Hillward, do y'all ever take a break? Are we trying to have a third child? Edward and Hillary stopped once they realized Alexis and Chris were outside, the both of them coming into the living room to greet them. Please, Edward, stop flirting with Hills right in front of your parents. Alexis felt a bit awkward after knowing what she just interrupted, but hearing her son talk about her grandchildren put her mind at ease. Unfortunately, Alexis's and Chris's timing wasn't the best. Hillary Hillary couldn't stick around as she had plans to visit her brother and sister in Hanford Don Bagley, so it would just be Alexis, Chris, Edward, Nina, and Micah for the next few hours. Edward caught up with his parents, talking about his kids non-stop, about how much he loved being a dad, and how he had never felt closer to Hillary. He felt his love grow for her more and more every day, especially after witnessing her birth his children twice. Alexis and Chris were so happy for 
for their son. He and his wife made the best out of a bad situation. And now, it was time for them to meet the little mistake responsible for this mess. Nina Volkov was lying on the play mat in her bedroom. Edward picking her up and introducing her to her grandmother Alexis for the first time. The introduction went very well. And grandma Alexis was so mesmerized by Nina's beauty. Nina too was mesmerized by her fabulous grandmother. However, the situation changed when Alexis introduced Nina to Chris. She immediately started to cry. Damn Chris, that's rough LMAO. Upstairs, Edward was tending to the needs of his newborn son, Micah Volkov. Nina was genetically spared. I hope we can say the same about Micah once he ages up. Christopher placed Nina back down on the mat and tried to cheer her up with a story, which worked, but Chris was obviously a little booty tickled that Nina didn't like him when they first met. It's so ugly and annoying, and now she's crying. Can we not? Luckily for us, there's nothing Grandma Alexis's embrace couldn't fix. Chris is sour that he can't relate. Edward came back downstairs to check on how Nina was doing with her grandmother, and that's when, for a third time, Micah started to cry. Chris decided to go ahead and introduce himself to his grandson, hoping for a better outcome than his introduction to Nina. He changed his diaper and fed him as well. Every Everything was going great between the two of them. And Nina started crying again. Girl, if you don't just go to sleep before leaving, Alexis interrupted Micah, who was in the middle of taking a nap, to meet him as well. And she felt as happy as can be. Her heart felt full with her grandson in her arms. She knew her and Chris did an amazing job raising Edward. She knew that he and his wife Hillary were going to be the best parents to these little fucks. And she couldn't wait to see them again. And with that, Alexis and Chris said their goodbyes to their grandchildren and to Edward, wishing him all the best and offering help if he and Hillary ever needed it. They were just a phone call away. Back they went to Moonwood Mill, preparing themselves to meet their third grandchild any minute now. 